Welcome back, guys, to the Power Half Hour. And today we have our very own EXP Realty agent, team leader, um, top 50, uh, Mr. Ken Riggle. How are you, sir? Welcome. Thanks, John. Uh, good. I'm very good. How are you doing? Very good. Awesome. Um, I don't know if I told you, but I could just uh, say it here that, um, you know, my last day as president of EXP Realty Canada was March 29th. If you didn't know, if you didn't get the email, I did uh, see that email. You yeah. did see that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, now I get to uh, spend a little bit more time with my family. Um, so j just to put that out there first, if we're talking about presidency or whatnot, but, um, uh, but today is about you, Ken. Today. Oh, it is. Uh, oh, great. Lucky <laughs> me. <laughs> we we want to know, um, how did you get started in real estate and, and how long have you been doing this? Oh, wow. Long time. Uh, so I got into real estate. I was actually I used to host uh, radio shows. I worked at radio stations. So I was a program director and a, a music director and then a radio host um, all over the country. And then I just, you know, we had, uh, we started having kids and we were tired of moving around. We wanted to come home. So we ended up coming back to Calgary and um, I ended up launching a radio station here while I tried to figure out what I was going to transition to. And then mm. just like, like a lot of people, I kind of fell into real estate. You know, my father-in-law gotcha. was a, a long time realtor at a really good friend that was on a team. And so, um, he's just like, just try it, just go get your license. So, so I did. Um, and that was 17 years ago and oh, wow. I haven't, yeah, it was a long time ago and I haven't looked back. So. Awesome. Well, you have a great voice for uh, radio and TV, I think. Uh, now, now I know why. I'm like, okay. So did you ever kind of dabble back into that or just full time now real estate? No, well, I did, I guess for the first couple of years. So, you know, when you transition into real estate, especially back then, um, I was lucky and I was hosting a morning radio show in Calgary. So I would be up at mm. three in the morning to get to work by five and then wow. I would be off the air by nine, nine thirty. And so then I could go work real estate all day. So that I oh, wow. did that for a couple of years uh, to transition, which I was super, super lucky to be able to do that. Not everybody has that um, luxury or that flexibility to transition into real estate. Mm -hmm. um, and then over the next few years, I would get calls from radio stations in town. They needed some vacation relief and that kind of stuff. So I would jump back on the air and oh. you know host a show or two. But other than that, no, I, I, went, I went whole hog into real estate after the first two years for sure. Oh, gotcha. So 17 years ago, that was uh, yeah. exactly when basically I started about, uh, so 2007 is when you started, right? Yeah. That's right. Um, you know, cause Calgary has seen a lot of cycles. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And so how did you navigate through all those cycles, like mindset wise? What did you do differently to like still be here today, which is phenomenal? Um. Yeah, it's funny. I got my license actually as the market was crashing. So the uh. financial crisis of 2008, our housing market had actually started to crash the summer before that because we, in Calgary, traditionally, we follow the rise and fall of oil and gas. And so the mm -hmm. oil market had started to tail in the summer of 2007. I got my license in the fall of 2007. And so we were in free fall by the time the financial crisis hit. So um, I didn't I didn't learn how to sell in an up market. I, I learned how to sell in a crashing market. So I think that was one of the best things that could have happened to me is that I had to learn how to actually generate leads and how to actually convert mm. and how to actually, you know, help people in a market that wasn't very good. Um, you know, and we've seen, so that was 2007, you know, this market is, is usually in a seven year cycle where we kind of mm. tail and we climb and we tail and we climb. And those, those cycles can be in seven years. So I've been through a few of them and I would just say that um, you can get you can get really sidetracked by the noise, mm. but all you really have to do is just put your head down and beat the market, right? Like every market oh, is going to be different. It's never the teeter totter is never in the middle. We're either in a buyer's market or we're in a seller's market, and it's momentary where that teeter totter is balanced in the middle. You just have to beat every single market and just put your mm. head down and work. Like work, work works, right? Like yeah. you just you just have to understand the market that you're in and adjust accordingly. And and I think if you've got that mindset, just you can't let the market affect you. You just have to learn how to beat it. Wow. Okay. So in 2007, then when you came in, did you already have a database or, you know, coming in as a new agent, did you do anything differently like cold calling or networking <laughs> a lot uh, to be able to build a business when the yeah, market so, in free fall? 
So what was, what was cool about my previous career is, um, before like in radio, when you're, when you're, when you get ratings, what they used to do is they used to email or they used to mail out these forms to people and they would have to fill it out. And, you know, it was usually the, the mom in the house would fill out the form and it would say who, what radio station she listened to and all that kind of stuff. So it was all about recall. And then she would mail it in and radio stations would get credit for listenership that they didn't really have because the mom would be filling it all out for the kids and for the dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we knew that. So I had that. I, I knew that it was about recall and, and, you know, for me, it's about, um, people when everybody has room for two things in their brain, two plumbers, mm. two electricians, two realtors. Mm. And as long as you can hold number one mind share in radio, we called it P ones or position one. So, mm. the, you know, the first button on the dial. So, um, if you can occupy that mind share, when the word realtor or real estate pops up, if you can be the person that their, your name pops into their brain, you're going to have that recall position. So I took that approach. Um, we also database marketed very, very hard in, mm. in radio. So I was able to, to translate a lot of those skills into real estate, but I, you know, like anything, I'm, I'm also a person that will try anything. So, yeah. um, you know, I used to get off, I, I tell this story every now and again to new agents is, um, you had to try everything because I used to get off the air off my radio show at like nine 30 in the morning. And I've gotten kicked out of more Tim Hortons in Calgary than I can count because I, I went in and I just, I would go buy $20 worth of Tim Hortons $2 gift card. So I'd have 10 and I would make sure that I met 10 people and gave 10 wow. people a coffee before I left. I was ceremoniously escorted out of many Tim Hortons for doing that because they, they thought I was soliciting. Um, <laughs> but you know, I would do that. And then, you know, did it really wow. work? No, but I'm also a believer that activity breeds activity and you've got to yeah. try. So did I get any deals out of that? No, but it got me out of my comfort zone. It got me mm. to the point where it was like, okay, you know, now I can get out there and try a few more things. Um, you know, I, I tried door knocking and doing that kind of stuff, but, um, really what it came down to is falling back on what my skill set was and what I knew. And so what I knew is how to be a database marketer. And so once mm. I really became comfortable with that, um, that's, that's our bread and butter. 85% of our deals come from our client, our past clients, our sphere and referrals. So gotcha. lucky that way. Yeah. 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 No, that's great. So, um, but I, I like, I love what you said about activity breeds activity because you know, you got to try something until you find something that really works for you and double down and you certainly Absolutely. double down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, not everything, but everything works for everybody. Like lots of people don't love my style of business because it's very hands-on it's very, yeah. you know, you're interacting with people. It's very relationship rich. Um, a lot of people don't like that. So mm. it doesn't work for them. You know, a lot of people love door knocking that it doesn't work for me, but yeah. anything will work if you believe it and you mm. commit to it for sure. So that being said, then, uh, you know, 17 years now, how big of a database of past clients do you have now? Uh, I've got over a thousand past clients. So I think wow. I've got 1200 past clients in my database. Our database is a lot bigger than that just because we've collected leads over the years. Right. And, um, you know, sphere of influence, people we know, people that haven't bought homes from us, but our database is about 1200 people of past clients deep. Wow. So really you don't have to venture out. You just have to keep cultivating that database, your gold mine to be able to generate new business from that. And you no longer have to pay for new leads unless you're building a bigger team. Um, do, but do you buy leads? We do actually. Yeah. Oh, we, we still, for me, it's about having numerous uh, pillars of lead gen. So we try to gotcha. have four pillars of lead gen running at all times and we do have a team. So I've got other agents that, that need leads and need to be fed and not everybody mm -hmm. has the luxury of having a deep database. You That's know, I had right. a new agent come onto our team a few months ago. He has 20 names in his entire list. He doesn't know a lot of people. So for somebody like that, we supply leads for them and we teach them how to convert them and, and put them through that process. So yeah, we do buy leads. Leads. Some leads, mm. you know, um, are better than others. We try and be creative with how we're spending our money digitally to, to generate better leads. Um, we spend an awful lot of time on that, but yeah, we mm -hmm. do, we, and we do some Google pay-per-click as well. So yeah, we do gotcha. buy some leads, but it's not a huge piece of our business. It's, it's about 10% of our business every year. 10% of your business and 85% yeah. would be your past clients and center Correct. of influence. Yeah. And, um, you know, the rest would just come from maybe sign calls or just miscellaneous, right? Yeah. Sign so calls, open houses, that sort of okay. thing. So, um, yeah, the other 5% gets filled in there. So you're not really going out there. Um, I'm not going to say you're not hustling, but you're not, you're not doing the cold stuff anymore. Certainly. No, I don't. So I don't do 
a lot of the cold stuff. I mean, if it's if it's inbound, yes, I definitely will take it. Lots of listings, I will I will definitely gotcha. go on those. Gotcha. Um, I don't chase our leads. Those are primarily for our 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 team members. I don't want mm-hmm. to get in the way of that either. Yeah. I'll show them how to do it. I'll help them with it. But I want our team members to to have those leads be theirs. Um, I'm not going to take from them. I really rely on the business that I have built, and then our system of follow up. We're very systematic in how we follow up and how consistent we are with um, our touch points in our database mm-hmm. plan. We've got a we've got a fairly extensive database plan that people people hear from us a lot. Oh, that's great! Uh, how many touches would you say in a year that your past clients would hear from you? Forty eight. Forty eight touches minimum. Forty eight. Forty eight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I had people to look at, but that's uh, that's phenomenal. Okay, so what what I've been taught, anyways, uh, is uh, my my VIP clients would get twelve calls from me every single right. year yeah. and my b's and c's uh would get at least once a quarter mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then email uh once a month got it and then mail something of value once a quarter okay we're so a little that's not 48 <laughs> Yeah, no, our cadence is a little higher than that. So you'll get, so every month you get an email, you get a, a market report from us, an emailed market report at the beginning of the okay, month. Okay, okay. And, and my cadence is I want to be every two weeks, I, I don't want two weeks to go by without you seeing something from us. So uh, middle of the month, we will send you an item of value and it'll either be mailed or emailed or both. And if oh, wow. you're getting both, then it'll be a, ver- a different version of that, of the mailed piece. And so a lot of our past clients get hard mail in the middle of the month, once a month. So there, there's there's 24 pieces right there, mm. right, of the 48. Wow. Um, we do four client events a year. So every quarter we do a client event. And uh-huh. anybody in our bought, sold, referred list or our closed list um, that wants to be on that list, which is about 90% of the people that we've sold mm-hmm. to, um, they get invited to these events. And they can be anything. Yeah. We've, you know, we've held block parties in the past. We've bought sections of the arena at a hockey game, oh, you wow. know, things like that. We do uh, a fall event at uh, a farm yard here. It's kind of like a petting zoo and an amusement park kind of idea. We do a big family event there. We're doing a movie night coming up here shortly nice. um, to kick off the summer. So we do we do client events like that. And then um, we do surprise gifting twice a year where you get tickets to like the home show or the mm. renovation show or things like that. Um, we do, there's a, um, a, a market report or a, um, a CMA, right? You, you want to mm. do a CMA for all your past clients unsolicited. If they bought if they bought a home from you, you want to give them a market evaluation every year. And mm. then it's up to our agents to do touch points throughout the year and have a reason to call. So our agents are on a call cadence of, you know, for your A clients. I mean, I, I don't really break out our past clients into A's, B's, and C's anymore because to me, everybody's just as important as the last person. And if we haven't touched right. them in a while, we just, we still want to reach out and, and give them yeah. that phone call touch too. So um, we want to be calling our clients at least once a quarter and yeah. and social media touches all of those things and so birthday mm. cards christmas cards it all wraps up at about 48 touches a year wow okay i'm i'm taking notes right here man bringing back to the team thank you so much for sharing that ken and um you know so so right now i want to switch gears a little bit um do you have a family i do yeah, yeah. okay how, how many kids i have two kids, two kids? um I've got a 19-year-old daughter that goes to University of Victoria, so closer wow. to you okay. in her second year. And then I've got a 16-year-old son in high school. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So you were grinding all through the time when they were growing up. Yep. Yeah. So how, what was that like? I'm asking for myself because I got a five-year and two-year-old. Yeah. Well, you know what it is, how, how much of a grind it can be. Yeah. Um, I know you've got a fairly large team too. So hopefully, you know, you're able to leverage a lot of that while your kids are little. Um, I didn't do that when my kids were little, I was out there just grinding. So, um, you know, I tried to make it a point of controlling my calendar. Controlling my calendar is a really, really important thing to me. Um, You know, I would say after the first year or so in real estate, I did not show houses on Friday nights. Those were movie nights with my kids, Um, you know, and and so I would block that off. Um, You know, yeah, did I work a lot of weekends in the beginning? Sure. Um, But as they got a little bit older, I was able to control my calendar a little bit and direct traffic a little bit better Mm. um, to to carving out those times for your kids. I think that if you're in this business and if you're a solo agent, let's say, um, and you've got a family, you've got to treat them um, as the most important 
important appointment in your calendar and you block Ooh. their time first and then you fill everybody else in around that, clients included. And so as long as you've got your calendar under control and you've got those block times, I mean, if a client wants to go out and see something, it's you've got to have backup or have somebody ready to show a house if you're a, a showing agent or a buying agent and, and, and have that all set up. Yeah. But you've got to be committed to the most important thing in your life. And if that happens to be your family, you block them in your calendar and you do not deviate from that. A client doesn't take precedence over that. I love that. And uh, just went to uh, Propel in Toronto and Brent Go was speaking there. He said, uh, uh, your family, your health and, and faith, you know, those things are take precedence and real estate gets your leftovers. Yeah. And I think you have the same message is that your most important client is actually your family. Absolutely. hundred percent. And look, it's not, it's not a game of perfect either. You know, right. like there's lots of times that I've missed dinners or missed out on some things because, you know, we're just, we're flying, but my family also understands that. And they, but they also see how hard I work at fitting them in and making sure that they are my priority. I, I make sure that they know they're the priority. They're the priority. They're the reason mm -hmm. I do this. Um, and so as long as you can carve all of that out and make that, you know, it's, a, if you can win 90% of that, I think you've, you've won the game. I love that. And I appreciate you saying that it's not perfect because nobody is. Yeah. And you're going to miss some stuff and that's yeah. okay too. But as long as they know that you're working hard to, to make them a priority, they feel that. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. Um, and so now 17 years later, you're almost an empty nester. You know, three, three yeah. years from now, uh, your son's probably going to go away for school. Uh, why do you still do this? That's a really good question. And there are a lot of mornings I wake up asking myself why I still do this. I'm not going to lie. So, um, uh, <sighs> You know, I love my business. I can't say that I've been, you know, I will say for a lot of my career, I wasn't, I was, I was a bit of a lone wolf. Um, yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't hang out with a whole ton of realtors, but I loved my business. I loved mm -hmm. that part of it. And I loved our clients. Mm -hmm. um, I love the relationships that I've been able to build. And, and in a database centric um, business, like we've built where we our, our whole business is built on deep relationships. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just been, it's, it's enjoyable because you get to work with such cool people and you, um, you meet such awesome people. So I think it's the relationships more than anything. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you know, I'm transitioning as a team leader out of production. You know, I don't oh, do nearly as much production as I used to do. Awesome. Um, and I'm handing a lot more off. That's a hard one for me because I'm super competitive. So it's, yep. it's tough for me to give, um, to give, give business off, but I am transitioning into what I really enjoy. And that is, is helping new agents, um, Absolutely. helping veteran agents that maybe, you know, haven't been able to crack a certain level, um, being able to coach and teach and mentor them. So I'm transitioning more into that kind of a role on our team. Um, and I really, really enjoy that side of it, that mentorship side and the coaching, the coaching part of it. So, you know, th that's the cool thing about this business too, is that it's not just about selling. There's so yeah. many other ways to, evolve and grow yourself and your business as you get older because look I'm you know at the age where I'm getting quite irrelevant for first time home buyers so you know I've got a, I've got somebody on my team that is amazing with first time mm -hmm. home buyers so they get all the first time home buyers I'm just I'm not that guy anymore right um, so I, I just enjoy helping agents build their businesses now I love that do you feel that um you know coming over the to this system here at exp where we have an opportunity to help other agents get compensated did that give you a new lease on real estate yeah I think it was it was a really uh, I, I came over to exp for a whole bunch of reasons mm. um, but yeah the, one of the biggest reasons was how I could now affect realtors that wanted to learn and didn't exactly feel like they had to stay on our team mm. for me to help them right like now you can come into our team you don't have to stay come in learn what we do I'll give you everything I got like we'll just mm. give it all to you and if a year from now you want to get out of the nest and fly on your own awesome I want you to do that I want to get you to Great. that point um, and then if you stay in exp and you're in our rev share group well now you're in our mentorship group and so Perfect. we're still helping you we're still there to support you i'm still accessible to you and that to me was the biggest reason to come over to exp was that whole um the ability to mentor people that were no longer on our team uh, i love that and you kind of have a you know join our team and then you can graduate from the team as well and i'll help For you sure. become a yeah. solo or help you build your team and it's definitely possible at exp
Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't think anybody should ever stay on a team unless they, you know, they really, really want to. I think a lot of people feel like they join a team and then they're trapped and I don't want that ever mm-hmm. to be the case with us. Yeah. I want you, you know, if you, if you join our team and you don't like it, or if you join our team and you're ready to fly in three months, okay, let's talk about it. Let's get you to the point where you need to be, you can go like, um, I just want to help as many people as I possibly can. I love that. You're so easygoing. Kind of. <laughs> it's Ask amazing. my wife if that's true. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. Um, how, how important do you think in, in today's market a mentorship is and coaching is for agents, um, brand new or not? Oh, it's huge. I think it's really, really huge. Um, you know, we're in Calgary where Vancouver probably was about five years ago, I'm guessing, like we just maybe even a little bit longer, where we're going through explosive growth here right mm. now. And so um just like any other market, there was a massive amount of real estate licenses granted after COVID. And so we've had yeah. a huge influx of realtors. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of experience in our market. And the market is absolutely insane um so there's a lot of mistakes being made you can see it on the other side when you're negotiating deals you know young agents coming in thinking that they've got it all figured out and they just they don't like there's a mm-hmm. lot of there this can be this business is meant to kick the table out from under you it really is so um yeah mentorship in a market that's this crazy right now is super important so i'm on i'm we've got a couple of brand new agents on our team mm-hmm. and we're we're on them all the time like we're in contact yeah. with them all the time walking them through every thing so so um is it like encourage 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 or is it holding them accountable like how how hard are you on them well accountability is i'm a believer that accountability that we got tell everybody and they come on our team i'm like look you're committing to the fact that accountability is love right that's what we do here. Ah, so, i love that okay yeah it's the highest form of love in my right. opinion um so yeah, we, we hold you accountable. There's, mm-hmm. there's certain things you have to do. There's certain meetings you have to attend. There's metrics yeah. you have to hit. Um, but for our new agents, it's about, okay, so we got into this experience. This is what happened. How do we do it better next time? Or they're calling me, Hey, I'm in this, this is what's going on. How do I do it? So we, mm-hmm. we have a really open, um, we have a really open dialogue with all of our agents, like real time. We're there to help walk them through everything. Our uh, Every agent on our team is willing to mentor any other agent or answer any questions, be it on a team chat or be it on a phone call. Um, I'm fully accessible. Like we just, we want to be there and encourage our agents and walk them through things. And if mistakes happen, which they are going to happen, yeah. um, you know, we just basically do a, okay, what happened? Great. What do we learn from it? How do we move forward? And let's not do it again. That's fair. That's fair. That's good. Uh, accountability is the highest form of love that you can give yeah. to a person. I, I really, really love that. Uh, are you getting coached right now or mentored? Um, I take a lot from, I like dabbling. Like I'm a person okay. that I will take something from everybody. I think you can learn from everybody. I think you can learn yeah. from, I, I learn a lot from brand new agents still. Oh. Um, yeah, I think you can learn from anybody. So I've had a lot of different coaches over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a few guys that I really follow and that I really believe in, but currently, no, I don't. I don't have a full time coach myself. No. Oh, awesome. Okay, so um, I've been, I've heard recently that sometimes you need to listen to yourself. And I go through phases like that. So yeah. I will go and I will get coached. And then I'll feel better. And then I'll be like, okay, look, you know, um, (laughs) this isn't anything that I don't know. It's just, I need to get out of my own head. So a coach Uh, will help me do that. Like I, I just find that, um, a lot of coaches just help me get out of my own head and get back Mm. to doing the things that I know how to do the basics of real estate work works. And sometimes we can get sidetracked and distracted and we can get squirrel brain. There's bright, shiny object syndrome where, you know, we're in a world of technology and everybody wants to sell us something in real estate to help us generate more leads or a better website or, you know, this is shinier. And so you can get really, really distracted. And I think that, um, what a coach can do for you and what a mentor can do for you is get you back on track to what you already know and get back to the basics. Mm. The basics still work. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if, about technology and AI and all those things. You still, you use all of those things to your advantage as leverage, but the basics of real estate still count. Why do we get so lured by all those things? Like, oh yeah, if you do AI, if you do social media, you no, no longer have to cold call or talk to people. Like how much do you, of that do you buy, buy into? 
I don't. I, I think you right. I think you have to uh, use those tools, right. but they can't be the sole focus of your business. And I, I think that um, you have to be an adopter of, of uh, technology. I can't say that I'm an early adopter, but I'm definitely not a late adopter. I'm not in the middle either. I'm, I'm semi-early. I like to see things kind of unfold in front of me before I'll jump in. Mm. Um, I, but you do, have to, you do have to leverage all the new technology that's coming out to make your business better and to stay current. I 100% believe in that. But it's also because we're, real estate commissions are a multi-billion dollar industry in North America. Mm. And so everybody wants a piece of that pie. Yeah. And so everybody, you know, there's, everybody's a coach now. Everybody has a podcast now. No offense. I've got one too. So, you know, like, okay, every, I was going to say, yeah, yeah every, you know, everybody, everybody has there. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Every, everybody's a coach. Everybody's a mentor. Everybody knows how to generate leads better than the next person. Everybody's got another system that they want to sell you. And mm -hmm. so I think we just get so inundated with, um, people trying to sell us stuff. It can be distracting. I really do. So it, it, what you're saying is the basics work and work works. Yeah. And why do we ever get away from the basics? Because I think we get to a point, a level of, su of success where you plateau and now that becomes mm -hmm. your baseline and you want to grow again. I know that, that that's how it works for me. I will plateau. I'll get to a level of success and then I will plateau and I'm not comfortable at the plateau. So I'm now uncomfortable again. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So now what I want to do is I want to grow again. So I'm okay. looking for something to help take me to that next level. I know that that's what, that's what happens to me. It's when I hit the plateaus um, and I don't want to go backwards, I start looking for the next thing instead of just really focusing. And so I've always got to come back to focus on what got you here. This too will pass. Mm -hmm. um, do the basics, get back to the basics that we preach to everybody. And uh, you know, when the time is right, the business will take off again but sometimes you are going to plateau and you got to be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This has uh, been really eye opening, and um, it confirms uh, my belief is that you go and talk to people, you go on appointments and then you're likely going to take some listings or make buyer sales and you're going to make money. And yeah. if you could just make as simplified as that, yeah. like, that's all we do really. And then we put sure. in systems, AI, social media. Yes. Yeah. But if you get, get away from the basics, you're in a world of hurt, I think. Absolutely. I'm, I'm 100% with you. You broke it down perfectly. That's it. That's the basics of real estate. That's as simple as it gets. And if you can, if you can just focus on the simple and not get distracted, you'll be just fine. And on our team, we try and make it that easy for our agents. Like, look, you got four things to do this week. These are the four things that you've got to hit. That's it. Just go, whatever you've got to do to make these four things happen. Awesome. Go do it. But these mm. are the four things you got to do. I love that. I love yeah. that. Thank you for confirming my thoughts as well. Uh, Ken, um, if you were to advise a newer agent, especially in, maybe in Calgary specifically, when the market is so hot, there's like one month of inventory, yeah. buyer's agents are starving. What mm -hmm. would you tell them right now? Well, at first I would tell an agent to join a team where they've got support okay. and they've okay. got, that would be the number one thing is I, I, I truly believe that teams are the only way to get started in the business now properly, mm. where you're going to get mentorship and coaching and training from somebody that's in the trenches. I think that's super important. Um, I think there's a lot of brokerages, not our brokerage, but a lot of brick and mortar bro brokerages that are more like hair salons where they're just <laughs> renting chairs, right? Like, you, just, <laughs> you know, really it's the hair salon model. You rent a chair and that's all you really get. Uh, um, and so I, I just don't think that those brokerages uh, are, are doing new agents a service because the, they don't train like they used to and you don't work mm. for the brokerage anymore. You just hold your license there. And so teams have now become that that middle ground where you get the training and the systems and the processes and you mm -hmm. understand calendaring and a call cadence and why you need to follow up and you get those basics ingrained in you. So my, my first piece of advice is find a team that you align with that aligns with your value system. Um, and, and not every team will be, you know, there's not a lot of people, there, not a lot, not everybody aligns with our value system. Right. You know, there's, I've had agents come in to our team 
And our, our number one core value is you do the, do the right thing. The money comes later. I don't care. No. Um, I don't care about the money. I care about making sure our clients are, are well served and that will come back to us in spades. And so I've had agents come on our team. I'm like, and they're like, well, what do you mean? Like when we're doing a deal together, I don't get preferential treatment because I'm on your team. Well, no, you don't. The client gets preferential treatment, not you. And so that doesn't work for some agents, um, but it's how we operate. So you've got to, you've got to align yourself with a team that, that fits your value system number one. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to find a mentor that has systems and processes that are duplicatable and repeatable, um, that are easy for you to follow so that all you have to do is plug it in and, and you'll be able to play. I love it. Plug and play. If you're a newer agent, reach out to Ken. Uh, Ken, how can we reach you on social media and follow you if we want more content? Yeah, so it's at Ken Regal Group uh, is our team page on, awesome. uh, that's Instagram and Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn is just at Ken Regal. And then our YouTube channel is the Ken Regal Group too. You can always hit me up uh, text-wise at 403-835-6338. That's actually my direct cell number. You can get right to me that way. You won't get filtered awesome. out. And then <laughs> uh, my email, our, our website, you can reach me there and get my email. It's ken at krgroup.ca. Um, our, our website is krgroup.ca. No, no AI answering for Ken. No worries. Nope. It's just Ken. No, if answer. you get, if you get my personal stuff, I actually answer. So, wow. Amazing. Well, Ken, it's an absolute honor to be in partnership with you here at EXP, uh, man of integrity, do the right thing and the money will come later. Guys, guys, what a great episode today. Ken, thank you for being here. John, it was awesome. I really appreciated the invite and, uh, uh, thanks so much. Thank you.